So I will get us started today and welcome to our next series of the Gracie interview series of virtual gathering. We are very excited about our conversation today uh, and because we get to have our very own Keisha Sutton James, the chair of our board of directors as uh, moderating this conversation. So welcome to everybody and Keisha, I'll toss it to you to get started. Thanks so much, Becky. Um, as Becky said, we are super excited about this conversation. Uh, Jess and I have only met once and in good news from my perspective, she's my new best friend. I'm hoping she feels the same way. Otherwise it'll be a little awkward, um, but I just love her and what she's doing. Um, you've probably read her bio and perhaps read uh, some articles that have been published about her and her co-founder, Stephanie Littles Wax. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into her bio, but for, for those who haven't um, had a chance to dig in on, on Jess, uh, she is an Italian-American from New York. I'm a New Yorker, I love that. Uh, she went to NYU. Um, she wasn't quite done with school, and then she decided to go to law school. I did the same thing, but for business school. Uh, played a little bit on Wall Street, as did I. Uh, was still seeking from that experience uh, something more meaningful as was I, and frankly, as Wall Street often leads one to do. Uh, so she went uh, to the powerful and very important not-for-profits, not uh, Teach for America and Teach for All, um, where she began on this journey of working on mission, wish, working with mission-based organizations. Uh, then she dabbled in the world of podcasting as an executive producer of the hit podcast, Pod Save America. Um, and then she experienced a life trauma that frankly, no person should ever have to experience. She lost her brother to an accidental uh, fentanyl overdose. And, you know, obviously that reframed life as a whole. Shortly thereafter, she uh, heard Stephanie on a podcast and the, you know, by, by, uh, you know, God's intervention, if you will. Um, Stephanie had also lost her little brother to opioids. They found their way to one another, connected, and that was a fortuitous experience because out of that grew uh, Lemonada, they, they, their podcast company where they tell important stories, have difficult conversations, and try to bring a little healing to the world. Uh, and for that, I'm appreciative, frankly. Um, so from there, this is, has been a whirlwind of a year for Lemonada, for, for, for Jess and Steph. I love this Jess and Steph. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and frankly, we, those, of our, those of us who are in the media space and particularly those of us who you know, follow the podcast, uh, bro the, the, industry, the growth of the podcast industry, we know that it, this is a world where a lot of companies are running at a deficit. Uh, and, Jess and Steph, Jess and Steph have figured out how to turn a profit in their first year in the midst of a pandemic. They raised a million dollars in the midst of a pandemic. And you know, whereas they plan to launch four podcasts by the end, by the end of the year, they're now on track to launch 10. Uh, last thing I'll say is Lemonada, um, which I first of all, first of all like makes me, makes me happy. It makes me feel like drink, drinking like a spritzer and Mykonos <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, it just makes me smile. Um, but it's, you know, it's a special company. She is a force. She, they, she and they clearly have what I like to call the secret sauce. And she's here to share some of that sauce with us. So I want to officially welcome Jess to uh, the Gracie's interview series. Welcome, Jess. My gosh. Can you just follow me around everywhere <laughs> I go? You're the best. Thank you. That was so kind. Thank you. You're a rock star, as, you know, as is evidenced by this incredible journey. Um, and what you've been able to accomplish. So no, thank you for being here with us. We're really appreciative um, and just psyched and excited about this experience. So let's dive right in. Um, so I'll start with, you know, obviously that your career is a fascinating story and we'll, we'll come back to career a little bit, but the most important, I think, element of your story obviously has been uh, the experience of your personal pain um, from losing uh, Stefano. Uh, to an opioid overdose and obviously you know from in your journey and recovering is what sent recovering from that trauma is what set you on this particular prof professional path uh, can you tell us how you move through that yeah um great question I feel like I'm still very much moving through it and Stephanie and I so my brother was Stefano and my business partner is Stephanie 
um, which has some weird things. They both are staff. I've called them both staff, so that's also extra. Um, but, but I think, you know, we had, we were, Stephanie and I were two sisters, two older sisters who had our ish together and we lost our brothers and it was unfathomable. Um, and so this company is, you know, it's venture backed, it's profitable, it's for profit, it's a growing media company, but it is also literally a work of grief. Um, and it gives you an opportunity, it gives us an opportunity, and it gives people who are listening with us and creating with us an opportunity to make tough things, tough moments in the world, our own personal ones and bigger ones worthwhile, uh, make our brothers' lives and deaths uh, mean something more than just tragedy. Um, and so I think, you know, we're, we're still there. We're still, we're still moving through it. I, and I think from a concept perspective, um, Stephanie and I came together to make one show last day, which is our flagship show and just came back for season two. Um, and that show zooms in on someone's last day of life and then zooms out to help people understand a broader epidemic. Season one is opioids naturally. Season two is suicide. Um, it's like 25% funny and joyful and the rest is like heavy, but interesting and, and very narrative, very much like you're listening to This American Life. Um, we, we came to, to make that one show, but in the course of like creating it, we, we just, we hit on something from a marketing perspective, which is that people are struggling. And the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is not what did the president tweet or what policy is passing the legislature in my town or in the federal government. It is like, am I okay? Are my people okay? Um, am I gonna make rent? Um, this big thing that's happening, is it gonna affect me? And so we leaned into that, um, not knowing whether it would be a big company or a niche company, um, but we leaned into that sense of lonely, loneliness and despair that was plaguing us in 2019 that only came to be tenfold in 2020. Um, and you know, our own personal grief became the grief of a country, um, a world really, um, and all of the things that are hard and helping people get out of bed in the morning every single day with podcasts that bring hard things to light, but that also um, create light moments and, and some joy. Um, you just referred to some the loneliness and despair that people were talking that, that people were experiencing in 2019 um, and that how that magnified in 2020. You had said when we were on our call the other day, I didn't even realize the stats were off the charts in terms of you know depression, suicide, et cetera, et cetera, in 2019. I, we can only, I can only imagine uh, you know by the time we get to the end of this year, we're now at 250,000 deaths due to COVID, um, what the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the impact and uh, the magnitude of the impact in 2020 um, has been and will be. I imagine you have particular insight into it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and it's not all gloom and doom. I think that the headline is that we can, we can work through this and we can create lightness and we can create community and content and other forms of, of solace for people. But yeah, in 2019, when we were getting ready to launch Lemonada and making a marketing case for it, for ourselves in part to figure out what is the first batch of shows going to be, but also for every other aspect of you know media creation that you could think of, um, something like 40% of Americans reported feeling lonely, something like 70% of commuters reported sitting in their car by themselves for upwards of an hour just to get some peace of mind before going into work or going home or whatever. Um, you know, there were other stats. Um, we knew for sure that the overdose crisis was enormous and, you know, every news outlet was covering it, but no one was covering the sort of why of it all um, from a human perspective. We was very much about um, pharmaceutical companies and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, the, the, mental illness crisis in the country has been growing for, for a long time in different pockets, everything from um, LGBTQ youth to returning vets to middle-aged men. Um, you know, people are, are in a, a state of despair um, and this coronavirus situation has not helped. It has, it has made some things worse. It has made the loneliness worse. It has also made like things easier. It's made it easier for people to get like help from bed. Um, and there's been some barriers that have come down. So there's been some silver linings, but yeah, I think the country and the world to some extent, but certainly the country is in a, is in a dark and isolated place. And there's a huge moral imp imperative for, for companies like ours to do something about it. But it's also like 
it's good business. Like it is good business to make people happier. 